Today we're going to uh, talk about, or I'm going to demonstrate, how to fix a common problem where the rim of a piece gets too wide and when you try to collar it in, it ruffles or folds onto itself. Um, I've talked about this a fair bit here and there, so I thought I would demonstrate it. So I'm also trying a new um, mechanism for recording. I'm just trying to add a voiceover to see how that works. So here I'm centering. You can see I've centered sort of high and narrow because this happens the most often when you're making a tall narrow piece where the top gets too wide and then when you try to make it narrower it uh, ruffles up or folds onto itself. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, how to do that, how to fix that when when that happens. Now you can't fix it. You can't necessarily fix it in a normal sense. You can't necessarily make the same piece that you would have, but you can take the piece that you have on the wheel and turn it into something that you might be happy to have. Another option, obviously, would be to just start over. Um, but in this case, we're gonna we're gonna pull up the walls um, until it uh, gets too wide. Um, if you don't keep the rim narrow, it will naturally get wider and wider as you pull up walls. That's sort of the nature of pulling a wall. It, it'll get wider. And so I'm going to intentionally let it get wider here. That's uh, not something I would normally do because that's, you know, it's not something that is helpful, but it is a common beginner mistake. So I'm going to uh, go with that and then show you what you can do to fix it if you've already done that. Uh, so I'm using my, my, uh, my favorite pulling sponge um, used to be blue. It's a mud tool sponge that used to be blue. It's been used so much that it's kind of gray. And I'm pulling up walls, but I'm not coloring in the top, even though I am going ahead and compressing the rim here and there. Um, so um, you can watch as the piece gets kind of narrower at the bottom and then it's getting wider at the top as I go because I'm not making any effort to keep it from getting wider and wider. Um, the motion of the wheel will naturally fling the rim out if you don't do anything about that. So now we have this piece that's sort of the opposite of the shape that I would normally want my cylinder to be. If I'm making a piece, I would normally look for it to be um, kind of cone-shaped, but this is upside down cone-shaped. So I'm going to try and collar it in here, and I'm going to show you what happens. So you push in on it, and you'll notice right away that the walls sort of start to ruffle up, and then it folds on itself like this. Um, obviously you can unfold it, so I'm going to show you what happens when you unfold it here. Um, it, it, you can try and smooth it out and hope that somehow uh, you can, sometimes you can push it back into shape properly a little bit by pulling a wall, but in this case I've, I've let it fold pretty thoroughly, so it's not really going to work. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to show you what happens. Again, you think, okay, I'm going to collar it in from the bottom. That'll help. But when you get to that point where it ruffled, it'll, it'll fold again. Clay tends to have a memory, and it tends to revert to form if you, um, once it's folded, you're kind of stuck with it. So I'm going to show you, sometimes people will decide that they're going to make it fine. I'll, I'll turn it into a wider piece now. 
I'll just pull out the rim and make it wide. The problem is that, as you'll see right here, it, it tends to tear on those folds because they are now um, weak spots. So the only real answer is to cut off the rim to below the point where it has folded. And you'll see here I, I didn't cut it off quite low enough. So I'm going to cut off a little bit more here because you can see in the walls there's a little bit of a weak spot still. The problem here is now you'll notice that we've lost like uh, pretty close to half, maybe maybe even half of the height of this piece. So we can't turn it back into the same piece. If I was throwing a big tall tumbler, I can't throw a tumbler again. I don't have enough clay left. So what um, so, so the first thing you want to do after you've cut off that bit is you want to rib your wall so that you'll get rid of any remaining roughly weak spots from where it folded because you may still have some. So if you rib it, it'll make it even and then you want to compress your rim again because the rim is part of what gives a piece of pottery structural integrity and you've just chopped it off um, and the walls are not necessarily strong enough to hold it together unless you compress the rim. So now I'm going to reshape this into a bowl because it's kind of too narrow and the walls are thin enough so that I can't... that's kind of what's left is I could... I suppose I could make it into a tasting cup or something but in this case I'm going to turn it into a bowl. I'm going to take my trusty red rib and I'm going to smooth out so that I have a nice bowl shaped interior. Um, and then I'm going to use it like I normally do. I'm going to use it to shape the wall from the outside into a nicer sort of round shape. Um, this is sort of a rescue once you've made the mistake of letting your piece ruffle up. This is the only thing I know to do, um, and this is what I tend to do, although I usually don't let things ruffle up anymore, but I used to. Um, beginners almost always, you know, it's a, it's a beginner problem. So here we have a pretty nice bowl shape. It's going to be small, kind of a rice bowl size, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, this is actually one of my favorite sizes and shapes of bowls. Be sure when you're done to dry out any any water because if you leave water sitting in the bottom of your pot, it will it can cause cracking. So there you go. About you know an eight eight and a half nine ten minute pottery rescue. Here I'm going to show you what it looks like. And there you go. That's what the inside looks like. That's uh, what that red rib did and then the outside and there you go.